So look, today we are beginning a brand new series entitled Resilient. Now, this could just be me preaching to myself, but there have been more than a few times in the past several months where I have felt a little bit discouraged, a little bit beat down by the world, a little bit defeated. I'm going to go ahead and ask if if you felt that way and you're in person, go ahead and raise your hand. If you felt that way online, go ahead and say yes, um, because I'm hopeful I'm not the only one. And, and just so everyone knows, like every hand in the house was up, uh, all 300 of you. Don't, don't tell them I'm lying, guys. They won't know. They can't see you. <laughs> so look, this series is designed around being resilient, and it's built around the story of this guy, Joseph. But really, this series was inspired by the next picture we've got. We've got a picture here. I don't know if you can tell what you're looking at on that picture, but what you're looking at is our newly paved back parking lot here at Foundation Church. We got that paved last summer, almost a year ago. Brand new, hot pavement, and I was was taking garbage out one day. I happened to know this, this little guy sticking up through the middle of our parking lot. Now, at first I thought, those darn pavers... They missed a spot. And as I look closer, I realize that this little guy was just not going to be denied. He was literally undeterred. He said, I will find my way through every little nook and cranny and grow through your newly paved parking lot. This is incredible. It's a little bit of an irritant. I have to be honest, I wanted to just pull him out. But then I thought, no, he fought so hard. I've never had hot pavement laid on top of me, but I can't imagine it's a good experience right? It's got to be awful. And yet here we have this little weed growing his way up through it. That's the spirit that I want to embody in my life. And that's the encouragement that I want all of you to grab onto today, tomorrow, this week, this month, this year, to be resilient. So today we're starting at the very beginning of this series. We're talking about having big dreams. You see, in order to be resilient, you've got to have a big vision. That little blade of grass, that little weed said, I'm going to grow up through this pavement. We also have to have big dreams. So today we're going to be talking about that. And let's start right there with that question. How many of you have ever had a dream? Now, I'm not talking about a dream at night, but I'm talking about like a big dream, an audacious dream, a dream that perhaps is so big, you're a little uncomfortable sharing it with other people. Show of hands, how many of you had a big dream like that? If you're online, go ahead and say, I've had a big dream. I'm going to share with you today two big dreams that I've had in my life. I'm not necessarily a dreamer, but I've had at least two that I thought were pretty big. And so we're going to start with the first one, which in hindsight doesn't seem as big, but at the time it felt huge. So I lived in Lake Placid, and in Lake Placid they have this really uh, big event. It's called an Ironman Triathlon. It's a long, long race, 140.6 miles. It involves swimming, biking, and running in that order. And I had a crazy big dream to compete in that race and to finish it. Now, many of you know this about me. You've heard this before. What you may not know about me is that it wasn't like this up and to the right, perfect training and preparation for the Ironman. You see, I was scared to share my big dream. And so I only told a few people, like my wife and kids knew, because I wasn't around a lot. So they were aware dad was gone training. And I had two training partners, Lee and Matt were their names, and they knew. But like almost nobody else in my church knew. That's how much pastors work, right? We can train for Ironmans and nobody notices. It's just one day a week, right? As long as you're there on Sunday. Well, anyway, especially early on, almost nobody knew. And I was training with them. One day I was running with Lee and Matt, and I kept having to say, guys, you got to slow down. My heart rate is like through the roof. I'm going to die. You got to slow down. And they said, well, maybe running isn't your thing, John. And then a couple weeks later, this is February, I'm in the swimming pool with Lee, and he's trying to help me learn how to swim because I couldn't swim very well. Did I mention that before? Yeah, I wasn't a very good swimmer, and I especially couldn't figure out how to swim and breathe. So, like, I could swim in the water or I could breathe, but I couldn't do both. And in the Ironman, you have to swim, like, two and a half miles, so you got to be able to swim and breathe. And I remember as I was gasping for air in the middle of the pool and choking water out and thinking I was going to drown, Lee said to me, well, at least you've got the bike. (laughs) In other words, swimming isn't your thing, John. What Lee didn't know was just a week earlier, I had been noticing some pain in my left knee on the bike. And every time I would ride 
it would hurt more and more and more and more. And so I had given up riding my bike. I thought, well, I can at least kind of run and swim, and maybe I'll figure this bike thing out at some point. So when Lee said to me, at least you've got the bike, what he didn't know was, in my mind, I was like, I can't run and I can't swim, and I don't have the bike. And I felt really, really defeated. You see, I looked at that dream that felt like this big, scary, audacious dream that I was so scared to even share with people. And I was grateful I didn't tell many people because I thought the dream was dead right there in February. I thought, that's it. Now, long story short, I overcame these problems. I competed in that race, I finished that race, and I was able to proudly say that I did it, that I had accomplished my dream. But isn't that the way the world works? The world takes our dreams and beats them down and throws up obstacle after obstacle and challenge after challenge. And by the way, if you have really good friends like me, your friends are like part of those obstacles and part of those challenges, right? They're on the sidelines not cheering you on but saying, you can't do it, don't do it, don't try. Maybe you guys all have actually good friends and it's just me that has friends that do that. But this is the way life is. And so in the midst of life, the lesson here is not to avoid dreaming, but to be resilient, to be resilient despite the challenge. And so today we're going to talk more about that. We're going to use the story of this guy, Joseph, to help us. Now I'm going to be reading from Genesis chapter 37, verses 5 through 11. This is something you can totally follow along with the Bibles you brought with you. Uh, if you're in-house, we'll put it up on the screens online, coming soon. <laughs> so Genesis Chapter 37, verses 5 through, through 11 reads as follows. Joseph had a dream, and when he told it to his brothers, they hated him all the more. He said to them, listen to this dream I had. We were binding sheaves of grain out in the field when suddenly my sheaf rose and stood upright, while your sheaves gathered around mine and bowed down to it. His brothers said to him, do you intend to reign over us? Will you actually rule us? And they hated him all the more because of his dream and what he had said. Then he had another dream and he told it to his brothers. Listen, he said, I had another dream. And this time the sun and moon and 11 stars were bowing down to me. When he told his father as well as his brothers, his father rebuked him and said, what is this dream you had? Will your mother and I, your brothers, actually come and bow down to, your, to the ground before you? His brothers were jealous of him, but his father kept the matter in mind. So look, we're going to walk through this. There's a couple things that I think are helpful to understand at the beginning. Number one, Joseph was one of 12, right? He was one of 12, and he was the youngest brother. The other thing that's important to understand is Joseph was the favorite. His father was not shy about letting Joseph know he was the favorite. As a matter of fact, his father made Joseph a special robe. Now, you may have heard of this called the many-colored robe, although some translations will tell you it was a long-sleeved robe. It's really irrelevant. It was special. And it pointed out each and every day that he wore it to his brothers that he was the favorite. The other thing that's really important to understand here is not only that Joseph was the youngest and that he was a favorite. But this dream was insane. That the youngest would be the, the, the powerful one. That the others would bow down to him. That was a complete reversal of their social order and their culture. And crazy talk. And yet Joseph had this big dream. So let's go back to verse 5. In verse 5, we have uh, the passage telling us that Joseph had a dream. And when he told it to his brothers, they hated him. Now they already didn't like Joseph. We're told that earlier in the story but now they really don't like him because he shared this dream with him. And I want to be honest, uh, this is a big dream. And for the youngest to have it and then share it is a big deal. The takeaway here, again, is not don't have dreams. The takeaway that I want you to get out of this is to have big dreams, like really, really big dreams. And so I want to share with you that second dream that I had, that second big dream. And Spoiler alert, you're all part of that big dream, whether you're here in Vestal or out in Oxford or online somewhere, you're living in that dream with me right now. 
You see, it wasn't that long ago, like five years ago, that I had this really big dream to start a church in Vestal, New York. And I said, I'm going to start this church. It's going to be awesome. It's going to be vibrant and exciting and filled with old people and young people and children. And people are not only going to come and have a great time in worship. They're going to grow in their faith. We had this huge, incredible dream. And I remember a pastor asking me in this area, so what are your plans for this new church that you're going to start? This was about three years ago. John, what are your plans for this new church? And I just looked right at him and I said, man, I've got big plans. Big plans. Uh, the reality is you heard me say we're living into that dream. So if you don't feel like it's 100% there, neither do I. I, I feel like we're, we're getting there. We're making our way there. But it's going pretty good so far, amen? If you feel like it's going pretty good online, go ahead and comment down below, amen. Um, but the story doesn't end there. See, we move on to verse 8. In verse 8, we're told that the brothers... Joseph's brothers said to him, do you intend to reign over us? Will you actually rule us? And they hated him all the more because of his dream and what he had said. This is really, really important here, and what he said. Because so often when people read the story of Joseph, you know what they say? Why did he tell his brothers? If they already hated him, why did he go and tell them? Like, why didn't he just keep his mouth shut? I don't know if any of you ever had a younger sibling I did, and my younger sister loved to say things to irritate me. Ashley, if you're watching, I love you. I don't know if any of your younger siblings, or maybe you were the younger sibling, but I almost envisioned Joseph getting a little bit of glee out of this, sharing with his brothers the big dream that he had. But again, the takeaway here is not to be afraid to share your dreams. So often we don't want to share our dreams because we're afraid they won't come true. And then we'll be embarrassed that we dared to dream something so big. And here's Joseph naming it and claiming it, saying, this is the dream that I had, and now I'm going to work toward that. Foundation Church, I told you that I had this big dream. And I began to share it with people. And some people were like pleasant and kind of nice to me. <clears throat> but there were other people who were less than nice. And so even before I moved to Vestal, I started to call area pastors and let them know, hey, I'm going to move to Vestal and I'm going to start a new church and it's going to be awesome. It's going to be this big church that's going to span beyond Vestal, out into the region and the area. It's going to bless people. And we really think that we're going to especially connect with people for whom the church hasn't been the best place. You know, people for whom the church has hurt them, people who've been discouraged by the church, or people who've come to church and said, that is kind of boring, and not much good news goes on there. And as I was sharing this with pastors, some of them were more than a little unhappy with me. As a matter of fact, I can remember one particular conversation where after I got off the phone, my secretary in my church in Lake Placid came into my office and said, are you okay? And I said, yeah. And she said, what was that? I said, well, I was on the phone with a pastor in the town we're moving to, and he was yelling at me. She said, I just kept hearing you say I'm sorry. <laughs> and I was like, and then he switched from yelling to telling me how terrible I was and how we were going to fail and it was going to be the worst church ever and I should just stay in Lake Placid. It was discouraging. I want to be clear with you that when you have big dreams, sometimes the haters come out. People who hate you all the more because you dared to share this big dream you have. Again, the takeaway is not to keep it a secret. Let's move on to the end of our story, because this is the good part. Verse 11. See, in verse 11, we're told that Joseph's brothers were jealous of him. But his father kept the matter in mind. His father held it up here. See, what you may or may not know about Joseph's father, Jacob, was Jacob was a dreamer. Jacob had this audacious dream of a stairway to heaven and angels coming up and down it and heaven and earth being connected. Jacob was a guy who was not afraid of big dreams, who he himself experienced big dreams. And so when his youngest, his little baby boy Joseph, comes to him with a big dream, Jacob at first says, what are you doing? Don't tell people. Keep it to yourself. But upon reflection, he keeps the matter to himself. 
Jacob thinks about this. And what's going to happen as you have big dreams and as you share them with people is other dreamers are going to be drawn to you. Now, you heard me say that each and every one of you are a part of this Dream Foundation Church. Each and every one of you are part of helping us make this church what it is and what it will become. That's because many of you are caught on to this vision of creating a vibrant, life-giving church for people who aren't perfect, who maybe have been hurt by churches before, but who want desperately to hear good news, something exciting and positive in their lives, and want to go out and share that. But there was a particular pastor, I told you I had a bad conversation. I want to tell you a good one. I called the pastor of the church I grew up in, a Wego United Methodist Church. And the pastor there, his name is Jamie Stevens. Jamie's not watching. He's not a technology guy. Jamie, I love you anyway. Jamie was just the best. When I called him, he said, John, I'm so excited to have you come to this area. And I can't wait to help you. And then he said, See, a lot of people were excited and happy for me, but then Jamie like, put his money where his mouth was. He was like, how can we help you? What can we do for you? And I said, well, funny you should ask. My church isn't a real church yet, and we need a financial home, a place to run all of our money through. And we need somebody who knows how to handle money to like, write the checks and take care of that stuff. Do you think Owego would help? He did not hesitate a second. He was like, that would be amazing. And so right from day one, a Wego United Methodist Church considers foundation like their little cousin, their little kid brother, their little baby that came out of them. And so whenever people from Wego see me or they see us online, they're always like, that's so awesome. You see, other dreamers recognize your big dreams and they take joy in them. So let's go back to that resilient. We want to be resilient even when the world is beating us down even when we're feeling defeated. And step number one to resiliency is to have a big dream, to dream big, right? Don't be afraid to dream big. Now, there's three things that I want to highlight for you, and the first one is don't be afraid to dream big. As a matter of fact, if you're scared of the dream that you have, if it feels too big, too scary, too impossible, and you think if I share it with people, they'll think I'm too crazy, that's probably the right size dream. Because we want to dream God-sized dreams. Dreams that can only be accomplished if God is involved. If it's too little, everyone will look at it and say, you did that. But if it's big enough, people will say, surely you didn't do that. God did that. The second thing I want you to point out, or I want you to hold on to, is tell people. When you have that big dream, you're going to be scared and intimidated, and afraid, and embarrassed to share it. Tell people your big dream. I promise you, some people will be jealous. Some people will be miffed. Some people will be patronizing, and even some people will be angry. But there will be those dreamers out there that are excited, that will latch on to your big dream and join in helping you accomplish it. The third thing I want you to remember is don't give up. Don't give up on your dreams. I have to be honest. No dream that's worth dreaming can be accomplished in a day or two or three. Any dream that's worth having, any big vision that's worth pursuing, takes years or decades. We're going to continue with this story of Joseph Joseph's big dream does not come true in the next verse or the next chapter. It becomes a reality at the very end of the book. Don't give up on your dreams. If you hit obstacles, if it feels like you're defeated, don't let them die. So again, today we're talking about having big dreams. But this is toward a larger goal of being resilient of not letting life and the world and all of the obstacles be us down, but rather being like that little blade of grass and pushing our way up through the pavement. Pray with me if you would. God, we give you thanks. Thanks for who you are. Thanks for bringing us here to this space today. Lord, give us big dreams. 
Help us to be bold and unafraid to share those with others. And then not to get so discouraged that we give up on them when the going gets tough. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So for-